Hello guys, and welcome to our channel. Have you ever wondered how mushrooms grow? In the wild, mushrooms reproduce by releasing spores, the fungi equivalent of plant seeds. The mixing of spores leads to the growth of mycelium, a root-like network of thin white fibers that are often found underground or within trees and decaying logs. Humans have foraged wild mushrooms for thousands of years, but the ones you find in the store today were most likely grown on a farm. Americans favor the ubiquitous white button variety. It remains the most widely produced and consumed mushroom in the US, though consumer tastes have started branching out to other culinary species, such as the shiitake, lion's mane, and oyster mushrooms. Many of these edible varieties are actually cultivated indoors year-round. Mushroom farms are increasingly popular in cities where fresh harvests of specialty varieties can be easily delivered to restaurants, grocery stores, and farmers markets. Mushroom farming consists of six steps, and although the divisions are somewhat arbitrary, these steps identify what is needed to form a production system. The six steps are Phase 1 composting, Phase 2 composting, spawning, casing, pinning, and cropping. These steps are described in their naturally occurring sequence, emphasizing the salient features within each step. Two types of materials are generally used for mushroom compost, the most used and least expensive being wheat straw bedded horse manure. The preparation of compost occurs in two steps, referred to as Phase 1 and Phase 2 composting. The discussion of compost preparation and mushroom production begins with Phase 1 composting. Phase 1 – Making Mushroom Compost Phase 1 composting is initiated by mixing and wetting the materials, as they are stacked in a rectangular pile with tight sides and a loose center. Normally, the bulk ingredients are put through a compost turner. Water is sprayed onto the horse manure or synthetic compost as these materials are moved through the turner. Once the pile is wetted and formed, aerobic fermentation commences as a result of the growth and reproduction of microorganisms, which occur naturally in the bulk ingredients. Heat, ammonia, and carbon dioxide are released as byproducts during this process. The use of forced aeration, where the compost is placed on a concrete floor or in tunnels or bunkers and aerated by the forced passage of air via plenum nozzles or spigots located in the floor has become nearly universal in the mushroom industry. Phase 2 – Finishing the Compost There are two major purposes for Phase 2 composting. Pasteurization is necessary to kill any insects, nematodes, pest fungi, or other pests that may be present in the compost. And second, it is necessary to condition the compost and remove the ammonia that formed during Phase 1 composting. Phase 2 takes place in one of three places, depending on the type of production system used. For the zone system of growing, compost is packed into wooden trays. The trays are stacked 6 to 8 high and are moved into an environmentally controlled Phase 2 room. Thereafter, the trays are moved to special rooms, each designed to provide the optimum environment for each step of the mushroom growing process. With a bed or shelf system, the compost is placed directly in the beds, which are in the room used for all steps of the crop culture. The most naturally introduced system, the bulk system, is one in which the compost is placed in an insulated tunnel, with a perforated floor and computer-controlled aeration. This is a room specifically designed for Phase 2 composting. At the end of Phase 2, the compost temperature must be lowered to approximately 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit before spawning or planting can begin. Spawning as a mushroom matures, it produces millions of microscopic spores on mushroom gills lining the underside of the mushroom cap. These spores function roughly similar to the seeds of a higher plant. However, growers do not use mushroom spores to seed mushroom compost because they germinate unpredictably and therefore are not reliable. Fortunately, mycelium, thin thread-like cells, can be propagated vegetatively from germinated spores allowing spawn makers to multiply the culture for spawn production. Specialized facilities are required to propagate mycelium, so the mushroom mycelium remains pure. Mycelium propagated vegetatively on various grains or agars is known as spawn, and commercial mushroom farmers purchase spawn from companies specializing in its manufacture. Spawn makers start the spawn making process by sterilizing a mixture of millet grain plus water and chalk. 
rye, wheat, and other small grain may be substituted for millet. For years, this was done by hand, broadcasting the spawn over the surface of the compost and ruffling it in with a small rake-like tool. In recent years, however, for the bed system, spawn is mixed into the compost by a special spawning machine that mixes the compost and spawn with tines or small finger-like devices. Casing Casing is a top dressing applied to the spawn-run compost on which the mushrooms eventually form. A mixture of peat moss with ground limestone can be used as casing. Casing does not need nutrients since casing acts as a water reservoir and a place where rhizomorphs form. Rhizomorphs look like thick strings and form where the very fine mycelium fuses together. Mushroom initials, primordia, or pins form on the rhizomorphs. So without rhizomorphs, there would be no mushrooms. Casing should be able to hold moisture since moisture is essential for the development of a firm mushroom. The most important functions of the casing layer are supplying water to the mycelium for growth and development, protecting the compost from drying, providing support for the developing mushrooms, and resisting structural breakdown following repeated watering. Supplying as much water as possible to the casing as early as possible without leaching into the underlying compost provides the greatest yield potential. Casing inoculum is a sterilized mixture of peat, vermiculite, and wheat bran that has been colonized by mushroom mycelium. Pinning Mushroom initials develop after rhizomorphs have formed in the casing. The initials are extremely small but can be seen as outgrowths on a rhizomorph. Once an initial quadruples in size, the structure is a pin. Pins continue to expand and grow larger through the button stage, and ultimately a button enlarges to a mushroom. Harvestable mushrooms appear 18 to 21 days after casing. Pins develop when the carbon dioxide content of room air is lowered to 0.08% or lower, depending on the cultivar, by introducing fresh air into the growing room. Outside air has a carbon dioxide content of about 0.04%. The timing of fresh air introduction is very important and is something learned only through experience. Cropping The terms flush, break, or bloom are names given to the repeating 3-5 to five day harvest periods during the cropping cycle. These are followed by a few days where no mushrooms are available to harvest. This cycle repeats itself in a rhythmic fashion and harvesting can go on as long as mushrooms continue to mature. Most mushroom farmers harvest for 35 to 42 days, although some harvest a crop for 60 days and harvest can go on for as long as 150 days. Mushroom pests can cause total crop failures, and often the deciding factor on how long to harvest a crop is based on the level of pest infestation. These pathogens and insects can be controlled by cultural practices coupled with the use of pesticides, but it is most desirable to exclude these organisms from the growing rooms. Mushrooms are harvested in a 7-10 to 10 day cycle, but this may be longer or shorter depending on the temperature, humidity, cultivar, and the stage when they are picked. When mature mushrooms are picked, an inhibitor to mushroom development is removed and the next flush moves towards maturity. Mushrooms are normally picked at a time when the veil is not too far extended. Consumers in North America want closed tight and white or brown criminy, mushrooms, while open browns portobello, are preferred by some consumers. Freshly harvested mushrooms must be kept refrigerated at 35 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. To prolong the shelf life of mushrooms, it is important that mushrooms breathe after harvest so storage in a non-wax paper bag is preferred to a plastic bag. Nutrients Mushrooms are a good source of numerous nutrients. They're an excellent source of selenium, riboflavin, vitamin B2, and copper, and are a good source of niacin, vitamin B3, pantothenic acid, vitamin B5, and potassium. It takes approximately 14 weeks to complete an entire production cycle, from the start of composting to the final stemming off after harvesting is ended. Final yield depends on how well a grower has monitored and controlled the temperature, humidity, pests, and so on. All things considered, the most important factors for good production appear to be experience plus an intuitive feel for the biological rhythms of the commercial mushroom. 
The production system used to grow a crop can be chosen after the basics of mushroom growing are understood. Thanks for watching.